Ta-da! Matt M. Roy back once again. Sorry about that, having some technical difficulties here tonight. Uh, but the show must go on. You can see that my slippers over there in the background. I'm all rested, showered, and ready to commence the live stream. Let's see. We got, wow, we got a lot of comments here. Let me see. Is there anything I can answer real quick? It's got a lot of talk about satellite. Let's see, Dish Network, Dexcom. Don't know. I honestly don't know a lot about either of those. So I'll leave that to someone there in the chat section to answer that. Stephen Barber, Netgear is my favorite brand. Never let me down. Well, I tell you, Netgear has, has been hit or miss for me in the past. I've had several different Netgear routers actually fizzle out on me, literally short. And then I've had some other ones that were really, really good. So just kind of hit or miss. I am not usually late, Ruben. Um, tonight it was unavoidable. I was having a little issue with the internet, but it seems like everything's working just fine now. Um, I'm adjusting the lighting a little bit. Instead of having the headlight over here with the um, daylight LED bulbs, I'm just using the old school, <laughs> say old school fluorescent light and a little mood light in the background. Plus, I do have the candle going, and I think it actually looks pretty good. So this might be the way I do it from now on. Tidewater Financial cut ties with Home Depot, so Eric no longer has a Home Depot credit card. A lot of businesses are doing that lately, I've noticed. Um, Best Buy has cut ties with their bank, so they do have a Best Buy card, but... You have to re-qualify for it. And I want to say that JCPenney did the same thing. I think my mom told me that the other day, that they're just basically trying to reconsolidate and go with a bank that probably gives them better perks. Because you got to remember, these big box stores, Best Buy, Home Depot, whatever, they get kickbacks from these banks to actually sign people up for their cards. And if the kickbacks aren't lucrative enough, they're going to look elsewhere. Michael Garner, I obtained a Dell Precision 490. Wow, blast from the past there. And I will be using it as a Windows XP machine. Let me look that up real quick because, honestly, it's been a long time. 490. Yeah, Xeon-based. Um DDR2 memory. That would make a great Windows XP box. Upgrade the, um, maybe upgrade. Well, no, and if yours comes with the Quadro NVS 285, like most of them did, then you're really pretty good to go. Nice score, buddy. Stephen Barber just got his Restore Media for the Lenovo. That's cool. Hopefully, uh, let me know how that goes. Uh, you can send me a private message if you don't want to put it here. Mr. Jimmy donated $1.15. Thank you so much. You guys know I really appreciate that. Now, since we have um, most of the people here are probably going to have tonight, I want to go get to what the meat and potatoes this is going to be about and that is that Home Depot is having a liquidation sale right now of a lot of their older, quote unquote, older um, routers and networking stuff. And you guys probably saw the thumbnail, and I will show you what I actually purchased today. Now, these were originally 34, oh, wait, let me see here, uh, 20, basically $30, like $29.95. And I purchased these for eight dollars and eighty-two cents each. I'm sorry. Let me let me reread that. They were originally thirty-four ninety-five a piece. Now I got them for eight eighty-two a piece. And these are the Netgear five-port gigabit Ethernet switches. So you can see them right there. 
These are not uh, wireless. They are wired. But the reason I bought them is I'm actually still using a uh, five-port Netgear uh, 10100 base switch over near my um, window system where I have all my vintage computers. And I want to upgrade to something gigabit capable. And that was a great deal for these. That makes it, what, maybe about 60% off. Um, and I did buy two of them. You can see them right there. Um, they had another one or two available, but I really didn't need it. And believe it or not, these are not selling for that much more online. Um, I could buy these and maybe I'd get an extra five or six dollars. So it wasn't worth buying these to resell. Now I'm going to get to something that is worth buying to resell. And I think uh, I'm going to buy a bunch of these tomorrow. Um, the next thing that they had on clearance were the Netgear Nighthawk. These were the model R, I think this is the R7000s. Um, so it's a 2014 model. They're AC1900 gigabit Wi-Fi smart routers. And I have a picture of it right here. You guys probably mostly familiar with these. These were are still selling on Best Buy's website, I believe Office Max slash Office Depot's website for $150. Office, Office Max, Home Depot has them right now for $45.95. Great deal. I would have actually picked these up if I needed one, but I actually have a router that's identical in specs to these. However, I am considering picking up a few just to maybe resell because I could actually buy these and sell them on eBay and make, well, let's face it, close to a $100 profit. So those are the two items that are available right now at my Home Depot. But I did some research, and it seems that all the Home Depots, at least in the U.S., are basically clearing stock out of their warehouses. So if you go to your Home Depot, chances are you're going to find a lot of clearance items right now that are network-related, i.e. network switches, routers, maybe even some um, wireless adapters and things like that. Andrea Mallory, how is Baxter and Milo, and what do you think you're going to do with an air fryer video? I just got the same one as you and was curious uh, what I can do with it. Baxter and Milo are fine. Uh, they're actually out of the room right now. I think they're in with mom and her friend. I have used that air fryer. The one I got for Black Friday, I used it today for the first time, and I made my famous um, boneless pork chops in there, and they came out beautifully. One thing I really like about this air fryer, as opposed to the old one, is the way they did the basket. And the old one I have, the basket was actually a separate piece. And when you would lift the handle, there was a button that you would have to push to release the basket. And let me tell you, that made for some really, really messy situations because a few times before I got used to it, I would not have that little safety um, cover on it. And I would go to pick it up and I didn't vir virtually push the button down and the lower um, tray would be released and fall on the floor because that, that was how you would remove the basket. Well, they've done away with that now. With this new one, um, the basket is like a little removable piece that sits over the, the tray, I guess you would call it, and there are rubber pieces on the side that keep it in place. And I'll, it, I'm not very good at explaining those things, but it's um, a much better design, in my opinion. And once I do a review on it, I'll show you what I'm talking about. And it, it really, really works much better. Eric Brunhammer says he gets a lot of his bulk Cat 6 from either Lowe's or Home Depot. Home Cheapo, I love that. Yeah, yeah, they, they offer a big box of them. I mean, I know a friend of mine a few years ago did um, the Cat 5 wiring in his house, and he wanted to buy in like, I think it was like 500 feet of it. And he got it for like 100 bucks, which was actually a really good, cheap, good deal. I love that Home Cheapo. That's funny. Daniel Maggio, how do you donate? Um, there's a super chat in the window. If you click on that, it'll allow you to uh, donate money. Now, I don't know if you have to have like a PayPal account. I've never actually done it myself, um, but it's you don't have to. I mean, like I said, that's just if you feel uh, if you feel like you want to, you can give a couple of dollars. I don't ask anybody to give any more um, than they can afford.
Sunsets at Shabooms. Hey, Matt, what are your thoughts on the iBuy Power desktop PCs uh, sold at Best Buy? Honestly, I've never seen them before. Um, I've heard people talk about them. Um, I don't want to give my uh, review on that or my input on that because, honestly, I've never actually seen one before. I know it's like they're gaming rigs, and any pre-built gaming rigs are usually overpriced. If, if you're looking to get a gaming rig, you're best to have it built, either build it yourself or have someone independently build it for you. You'll save a lot of money. Charlie Lipinski's here, got two Mac PCs. That's awesome. I knew you were looking for them. I'm sorry I couldn't be of more help. I, I looked up there. When we were up at my uncle's, I looked in the uh, – in the local Craigslist and Facebook yard sales for you, but pretty much all they had was was junk, like really, really old Mac Pro towers, first gen stuff that I wouldn't buy because at that point they're ten plus years old and they're on their last legs. System Max Venture computer case, yeah. System Max had some decent computers. Um, I remember them from their Windows XP days when they were <laughs> when they were coupled with AOL. See how many of you guys remember that? Actually, you would the on these System Max computers back in the early to mid two thousands, they would have three stickers usually on them. One would say Intel Celeron because that's what most of them were. The other would say uh, designed for Windows XP, and the third would say AOL Optimized. Now, to this day, I cannot figure out what AOL Optimized means. I, I guess it probably meant that it had a modem and it had all the software needed to run your America Online, but I, that just made me laugh. AOL Optimized. I mean, AOL was never optimized, in my opinion, so how could you sell a computer that's supposedly optimized for it? I mean, that just... Blew my mind back in the day. Yeah, a lot of people uh, collect the vintage Macs and vintage computers. You know, I'm more into the vintage PCs myself, but um, I had a couple of G4 towers. As a matter of fact, I'm, I'm starting to share older videos for those of you that weren't around to see them when they first came out. And um, the last one I, I think I shared this morning was a review of my old Sawtooth uh, Mac G4 tower. Really missed that. That was not a high-end computer by any stretch of the imagination, but I mean, they were just so cool looking. I, I, I actually regret getting rid of that stuff, but had to make room for other projects. Eric says, I remember seeing the System Max infomercials in the middle of the night wishing I could afford one, <laughs> LOL. They, they were not expensive computers, but yeah, at that time of my life, I couldn't afford a new computer either. At that point, I think I was probably running off an old Pentium 2 or Pentium 3, pretty much whatever I could get my hands on. You know, We didn't have a lot of extra money back then for um, luxuries like newer PCs. $2 from Sunset Shabooms. Thank you very, very much. John the Grindle says, I remember you had two Power Mac G5 with one terabyte upgrade. Yes, I did for a while. One was a, they were not the higher end. They weren't like the liquid cooled ones or anything. I think one was a dual two gigahertz and the other one was a single 1.8. Um, that honestly, they could have been upgraded, but even at that time to get the upgraded CPUs form were, was really expensive and they were hard to find because a lot of people kept these things going as long as they could. And they were really fun. That's how I started playing around with, uh, 10, four Fox, uh, the Firefox, um, browser that would allow you to run newer versions of Firefox on the, uh, power PC platform. There were good times. I might get one again if I see one listed cheap enough. But honestly, I'd rather play around with a Mac Pro tower, something like something like a Xeon or even like a like a Core Two. I think they were all Xeons, actually. Sunsets at Shaboom says, "Thanks, Matt. I don't need it for gaming, but for photo editing. I'm not an HP fan, and they don't have any Dells that meet my needs at the time. At this time, yeah, just do your homework. Um, 
you know, if for photo editing, I mean, you'd probably be fine with like uh, an i5 or an i7 Dell. Um, but I know Best Buy generally doesn't have a lot of i7s in stock. Usually if you want an i7, you have to order it off their website. Um, but yeah, I mean, if, if the computer is, is a good fit for you, then buy it. I'm, I'm not going to tell you not to buy it unless it's something <coughs> Celeron related. <clears throat> Eric says, at that time, I was running a trash pick socket 7 Pentium 233 megahertz. Wow, not even a Pentium 2. So you weren't even at MMX technology yet. Still, I mean, for the time, you, you would have been able to surf the internet. You probably wouldn't be able to do a lot of streaming. I think Java would have been an issue. So you probably have to keep all the extras turned off like JavaScript. But hey, you'd still be able to do basic internet browsing. and. Uh, actually started running Winamp on a computer very similar to that. It was a Pentium, I think it was a Pentium 2, if I'm not mistaken, but it was at the same 233 megahertz. And I am such a big fan of Winamp. I still run an older version of Winamp on my HP Pavilion 8000 series over there. Love it. Absolutely love it. The 233 had MMX. I thought only the Pentium 2 did, but I could be wrong there. You know, it's been a long time. My memory tends to fade after a while. Michael Garner said it was typical to run XP on a Pentium 2 and Pentium 3 systems. Uh, yeah, my uncle used to run XP on a, uh, a high-end Pentium 2. I think it, start, it was a... Um, Dell Optiplex GX110 started life as a slot Pentium 2 400 megahertz, but he was able to upgrade it to a Pentium 3. I want to say it was a 733 because at that time he was doing a lot of wheeling and dealing. He was actually working at the Salvation Army. And the nice thing about that was they didn't actually sell the computers there. They didn't sell them in the store. That was a rule. So he was in the processing area. So when he saw computers come in, he, he struck up a deal with the manager where he would buy them from the manager, and then that money would just go to the store as like a donation. And that's how he got a lot of his uh, early uh, computers back in the day. And that's how I started to actually learn about computers was through my uncle. And this was maybe 2006, 2007. So, I mean, it was really interesting. We, we, we taught a lot of each other, a lot, a lot about computers to each other. And sadly he has passed on, you know, unfortunately. Yeah. Winamp, it really kicks the llamas behind. <laughs> I'll play that once in a while if I need a good laugh. Jonathan Grinnell said there were some Core 2 Duos, but they were mid-range models. Yeah, I don't remember many Core 2s in the Mac Pro Towers at all. I, most of the ones I've seen for sale are uh, Xeon systems. Tyler says, hey, Matt, just got home from work. How have you been doing? I've been okay. I've been a little under the weather. I've had some allergy problems, and... My sad disorder, seasonal affective disorder, is in full swing. I'm trying to get used to the early nights. Ever since I got on my lifestyle change, I'm an outdoor person, and I like getting the sun. I get like getting my vitamin D, and I can't get as much of it when the sun goes down like at 4 or 5 p.m., but I'll get over it. Once the time changes back, I'll be a much happier camper. Yo, I did not forget the water. Mm. And my mouth is very dry. Probably all the uh, Worcestershire sauce I put in the pork chops, all the sodium is getting to me. Hey, you could run Winamp on a potato. Yeah, it, do it doesn't hire gun. It doesn't really require much, to be honest with you. Especially the older version. I think you could actually run it on a, uh, a Pentium-based system, the Pentium 1 system, that is. You know, Tyler went back to ICQ because he hates Facebook. <laughs> Don't we all at times? 
believe it or not, I've actually deleted and remade Facebook accounts, I think, twice in my life. I'm going to keep it because I like being able to interact with people, especially people I haven't seen in a long time. But yes, I do understand your frustration with Facebook. There's a lot of drama on there. Ruben says, get the Dell Optiplex 3020 for as cheap as possible. That is a good option. You can get something like a i5 in that, second or third gen. That would be a great video editing rig. Depending on what software you're using, even something like a uh, Dell Vostro 400 or a 2 250 with a Core 2 Quad would be a really good option too. Believe it or not, those Core 2 Quads, especially like the Q9600, the 9660, are still very workable CPUs. A lot of people use those for gaming still. All right, Ruben wants me to do garage sale videos. Unfortunately, they're pretty much done for right now. The, the temperature is too cold, and it's actually going to rain tomorrow, but I will do them uh, if at all possible. I need to check garage sale finder just to see if there's anything in my area, and I have my doubts. Goodness. Tyler says, hope you feel better. I've been diagnosed with fibro, so I'm unable to do a lot of things, sadly. I'll keep praying for you, buddy. I know a few people that have that, and it is not, it is not fun, though. It can go into remission. A lot of people don't know that. There is one garage sale listed in my area, and it doesn't appear to be the kind of items that I'd be interested in. Let me see what they say. Nickel sets, bracelets, rings, paparazzi, nickel, and lead-free. So it's basically like a jewelry sale. So, yeah, you guys will unfortunately have to wait probably another month or so before I can get back to any garage sales. Eric, oh, man, that I, I get that totally. says, I'm actually planning on taking Facebook off of my phone so that I can stop spending so much time on Facebook. I do the same thing. The first thing I do when I wake up in the morning is check my email and all my Facebook messages, and that probably takes me at least 15 minutes. So I'm, I'm with you, buddy. I, I, I really want to stop looking at it so much or just disable it. I mean, you can go into your settings and just disable it so it doesn't run in the background. So got 28 watchers and eight likes. All right, let's see if we can get some more likes here. I know we got I know we got to have more than eight likes at this point. I'm kind of curious to see how many dislikes I'm getting because uh, <laughs> yeah, you know the trolls. The last few videos, the trolls have been in full force. Incidentally, the way I look at to see how many dislikes I have, I open up the incognito browser in um, in uh, Chrome, and I and I just go to YouTube as kind of like uh, like I'm just anybody, just not you know I'm not logged into my account. Three dislikes and eight likes, man. The trolls are definitely in full force. But as I've said in the past, even um, bad publicity is good publicity. So I'll take it. I'll take it. Ecolia229 has just joined. New person. Nice. Ruben's going to ride the trackless train right now. Oh, boy. Make sure it stays in one place or in one piece, I should say. <laughs> Uh, what's going on with the chats here? The chats have frozen up, so let me give me just a second here. There was something else I want to talk to you guys about. Oh, yeah, just to prove to you that I actually paid what I said I paid for those switches. There you go. Total of $18.70 if this thing will focus. Come on, there you go. $18.70, and I did buy it today, though. I might go back tomorrow and try to find a few more of those. 
You might buy the other one of those switches. I'm definitely thinking about buying some of these routers. And if you guys have them in your area, I would highly recommend doing it because, hey, you can make some quick cashish with that. Ruben says, there's a Christmas tree lighting celebration right now, so see you in the next live stream. Absolutely. I, I understand that. I will see you next time. Hopefully this year we're going to get to the Grand Illumination in Williamsburg. I'm not sure if we're going to make it there or not, but if we do, I'll definitely bring in my uh, camera with me. Probably going to do a live stream from there because it is really, really cool. They have the old school um, carolers. And at the end, they even have fireworks. And basically what it is, is it's in the heart of the old town Williamsburg. It's right in the city square. And it is a whole lot of fun. If you're ever in that area of Virginia, you, you got to do it. It's definitely an experience not to be missed. Eric is going to get his exercise at Home Cheapo tomorrow. No problem with that. I get it. I get my. I got mine there today. That's for sure. Stephen Barbara says, "I need to replace my dying Netgear router. She served me well. I'm going to replace it with a Netgear gaming router, something similar to this, because this is actually considered a gaming router. Hey, would be a great option, even though it's a 2014 model. Uh, for most people, it'll it'll still work just fine." Jonathan Grindle, Matt, you may want to start upgrading your laser jet printer because they're fading the model out sometime soon. Phasing, I got you. Um, I probably will. That thing has served me really well. I literally bought that about five years ago from a garage sale, and I'm still working on the original toner cartridge. It, I bought it and had 19% left. And now it has 16%. So probably what I'll do is I'll use it until the toner runs out. And then I'll just get something new. Because it really isn't worth putting a whole lot of money into that. Um, it is an older printer at this point. So yeah, you're, you're definitely right about that. Flips May is back. Awesome. We had 30 watchers here. That's about the most I've had in a long time. Uh, Flips May says inkjet printers are a waste. Well, you know, they have their uses. Um, color laser jets are ideal, but they're very expensive, not just to buy, but they're expensive to maintain. Um, an inkjet works perfect for me for doing uh, photo printing. I really don't need anything more than that. You know, if I was running a high end like printing business, then of course I would have a, a color laser jet, but for just my basic use, Color inkjet works fine. And then, of course, for the bulk of my printing, I use the monochrome laser jet over there. And, yes, that is monochrome. Epson inkjets are the best ones, Jonathan Grindle. Um, I, you know, I, I'm not a huge Epson fan. I am rocking an Epson workforce right now. And I got that for Black Friday last year, and I'm having a lot of issues with it, specifically with the uh, paper tray and also the firmware updates not taking. Um, but I really can't complain. It was only $39. It was 40 bucks. So if it lasts me another year, I got my money's worth out of it. Mark Covington says, hey, Matt, I cannot get Hallmark Card Studio 2012 to work on Windows 10. Well, I need to upgrade to the Hallmark Card Studio 2019. Um, possibly. Try running it in compatibility mode. Um, you can do a Google search on how to do that, but basically once you install it, um, you can right-click on it, and in the preferences, it will actually go into compatibility mode. And that might work. If not, then yeah, I would probably recommend just buying the new version. I don't. I don't think that's a very expensive program anyway. Let me look that up. Thirty bucks. So yeah, you're probably better off just buying the new version. Flips May says it would be cool to buy an old Epson dot matrix printer and try to get it working with Windows 10. I, you might find like a generic driver to get it working, but that would be a challenge. 
Oh, fond memories. I had my share of dot matrix printers back in the day. I had your typical IBMs. I had your Epsons. I had a star. See if any of you guys remember star dot matrix printers. I remember that they came in two varieties. There were the nine pin cheaper ones, and then there were the 24 pin more advanced ones. And me having a limited budget, usually I was just able to get the uh, nine pin ones. Um, but I did get a couple of later on, I got a couple of 24 pins. I actually had a 24 pin Panasonic color dot matrix printer. And that was interesting because it actually used the color ribbon and it didn't do the greatest job because there were literally only three colors. I think it was blue. You could get like blue, red, and yellow or red, blue, and green, something like that. And of course, it would have to do its best to try to get the colors right, but you really couldn't do too much with it. It wasn't really for like photo printing. It was more for just making like color banners and things like that. Mr. Jimmy says, Epson Stylus Color 440, worst printer ever made. I have to respectively disagree with you because we had a couple of the 440s and the 640s. If they were not properly maintained, they were the worst printers ever. But if they were properly maintained, they could be the most reliable things ever. And what tended to happen with those is the print heads would get clogged up because unlike most modern inkjet printers, the older Epson stylus colors had the print head built into the actual cart, uh, built into the actual um, carriage itself. And if you didn't clean them out properly, then they would get clogged up and the printer was just pretty much garbage fodder. Actually, I remember back in the day, many times, right after I would exhaust an ink cartridge, I would take it out and I would take a Q tip with some rubbing alcohol and put it into the print head and into the jet and underneath where the print head was. And I would actually physically have to clean those out. Um, but yes, a lot of people didn't know that you had to do that. And the consequences were those printers suffered uh, early failures. Flip some a Oh, classic mobile home is here. I don't want to forget to say hi to you. Please don't make me put you in timeout again. Yeah, that's one warning there. Uh, flips may the dot matrix printers were a pain the ribbons would always dry out yes they would um, and that's another reason that you don't see them all, that often anymore though you do still see them in uh, certain types of businesses uh, mainly because they're impact printers and if you have uh, a situation where they need to make multiple copies like on carbon paper they're really good for that because once again they're impact printers where they actually have the um, head impact on the paper. Um, also for that, I believe you can use, um, well, I know you can use um, daisy wheel printers and those are even harder to find nowadays. Eric Brunhammer says, since 99.99999% of my printing is black and white text, I would totally rock a dot matrix whole feed printer. Yeah, I mean, it'd be nostalgic for sure, other than the fact that they're extremely slow and noisy, and like we've said, the ribbons dry out. You're much better off just going with a monochrome laser jet printer. Stephen Barber said, brother printers are the best. I love mine, although she been kicked to the curb because of my Lexmark. The Brother printers were reliable, albeit the inkjet ones, the cartridges tended to be a little on the expensive side, um, but there are ways around that. You can get the remanufactured ink cartridges on eBay very cheaply now. Excuse me. You guys can probably tell my mouth is drying out again. Best thing ever water so many people don't drink enough water it's so important for a healthy lifestyle healthy kidneys healthy digestion all of that drink plenty of water <laughs> cfww i need some eight inch floppy disks good luck finding them they if you do find them they are extremely expensive i've actually never had eight and a half inch or eight inch floppy disks they're eight inch not eight and a half inch
Eric Brunemmer, I can get a genuine brother cartridge on Amazon for $21, including the imaging unit, LOL. You know, it's funny. I always forget about Amazon because you're you, there's usually two different people in the world. There are those that shop on Amazon and those that shop on eBay, and I'm the eBay person, but occasionally I'll go to Amazon. We need to remember uh, Classic Mobile Homes' brother who passed away today, and his wife and the wife is sick. So please, anybody out there, keep them in your prayers. Absolutely. You know, I I three eighty six. I was just going to do what you suggested. I'm going to look on uh, on eBay. Let's let let's have some fun. Let's see. Let's see how much 8-inch floppy disks cost on eBay, if they're even available. Okay. They're not quite as bad as I thought, but you're looking at paying. Here's one, uh, BASF. These were used. You're paying about $20 for this one. Let's see how much it costs if you want to get it new. Actually, here's a really good deal. This is a package of new old stock sealed Datatech 8-inch floppy disks for $25 or best offer. I'll go ahead and share that link with you guys just in case somebody's interested. This is odd because I remember doing this search back a few years ago, and they were really expensive. I'm guessing prices have gone down since... I wonder what do they hold? Are they three? How much? How? What are the? Uh, what's the capacity of an eight-inch disc? I, I'm curious about that. Let's look that one up. <laughs> Eighty kilobytes. Wow, that's incredible. When you consider after that. You know, 80 kilobytes, then I think the original, um, like five and a quarter inch discs were 360K. And then they went to seven or 560K double density. And they went to 760. And then they even went up to the 1.2 megabyte range for the five and a quarter inch. And of course, three and a half inch discs went all the way up to uh, two megabyte capacity or 2.8 in some of the IBM PS2 systems, although they are extremely rare. I mean, you hardly see those anymore at all. Flips Mesa's. I remember I never had a floppy drive with the Amiga that I had 30 years ago. I had to deal with putting data on cassette tapes. Wow. Yeah, that's definitely old school. I know usually by the time the Amigas came out, uh, most people had floppy di drives. But you know what? If you couldn't afford it, cassette tapes were pretty much the only other option. And they were notoriously unreliable. Um, you're basically taking an analog medium, trying to encode data uh, audibly to it. And if you had like a little crinkle on the tape and it couldn't, understand that piece of the of the audio then your program wasn't loading properly and some of these programs on cassette could take five or ten minutes to load be kind of a bummer if you're trying to load your game of pac-man you wait five ten minutes and it says you know load successfully and go to hit run and of course program doesn't run that would have driven me up the wall i've only loaded programs once or twice from cassette and uh, I think it worked one time, and the second time didn't. Didn't. And then I said, "Okay, forget it. I'm not doing this anymore." Took 15 minutes to load some large games. I wouldn't. I wouldn't doubt it. Was not a medium that I would like to explore. Though maybe, who knows? Maybe in the future, I, I will if I get another tank system. And actually. I do have my data set for my old Commodore 64. If I ever get that running, um, we can find some old cassette-based programs and see uh, if they actually still work. Eric Brammer, the crazy sound system in my old grammar key would erase my floppy disks. 
when I was in college. Wow, probably too close to the speaker there. Oof. Yeah, you always got to remember any any old floppy disks, being that they're magnetic disks, you got to keep them away from magnets because they will literally erase your disks. Stephen Barber, yep, we know you're an HP fan. <laughs> Michael Garner says, zip disks are better. I have two zip disk packages sealed. You want to know something funny? I have in my closet a case of zip 750 disks, probably I'd say at least 40 or 50 of them. And unfortunately, I don't have a working zip 750. So if anybody has one um, and wants to donate it to me, I'm willing to pay shipping because I would love to get a working one back. Because, yes, they are a lot more reliable than uh, – floppy disks, and even there's uh, super disk counterparts. Jay Wilson says, hi. I try to give everybody shout outs as much as I can. Okay, Eric. Yeah, that's cool. Man, we're all we're on fire here today. We got 30 watchers. Oh, I love it. Love it, love it, love it. Yeah, Asus, uh, especially in the mid-2000s, a lot of those motherboards were hit or miss because they suffered from capacitor plague. Probably one of the two motherboards I recap back in the day were Asus boards. I think the other one was a AS Rock motherboard, which oddly enough, I think was actually also produced by Asus. Classic Mobile Home is a Lenovo fan. Nice, got the Bluetooth working. Um it, there again, they can be hit or miss too. The, the the modern Lenovo's have really taken a downturn when it comes to quality, but that's with any computer nowadays. They're pretty much all throwaway. Not like the Dell Precision systems I bought, which are literally built like tanks. I mean, those things will probably be around years after I've been dead and buried. Eric says, somewhere in my storage, I have an HP cassette drive. Supposedly holds up to 250 gigabyte tapes. Wow. I'd like to see a video of that. I actually miss, Eric, I miss your older videos when you used to go down, when you lived in the apartment, you used to go down into the basement and shoot those videos. I actually miss that. I like personally like that format. You know, it's great to try to get more technical, but sometimes getting back to basics is even more fun. We're at 42 minutes. Wow, that's where the time flies. I lose track of time doing this very quickly. There you go, Eric. I'm for whatever works. That, that, that's me too. You know, when I was younger, I used to try to do a lot of these elaborate videos and a lot of these elaborate projects. But as I'm getting older, and I yes, I know I'm not old, but as I get older, I find that the simpler things make me happy and you guys seem to like it too. So I do, I do what works. <laughs> Classic mobile home wants to put me in a timeout. Well, unfortunately it doesn't work that way. But yeah, I, you know, like I said, I try to get to everybody on this live stream, and I will miss comments here or there. It's just going to happen. As of right now, I literally have about 100 comments and questions, and I just can't get to ever everyone. So please be patient with me. I'm doing the best I possibly can. Flips May, I'm watching this on my 2005 Lenovo ThinkPad T61 with Windows XP Pro. The laptop is as strong as a German Panzer. I believe it. Uh, the T61s were very well built. I mean, you're, you're talking about uh, a time like right when Lenovo and IBM were still a thing. You know, they still, IBM still had some influence on them. And uh, probably, I'm talking maybe 2014, 2015, 
Lenovo's on up are the ones that I really don't like. That's just when the quality went in the tank. I-36, I remember a Dell support agent called me an idiot. I deleted the diagnostic partition by mistake. My friends Dell with XP had the blaster virus. I had to reformat it. Well, you're probably better to do that anyway. If you had a, a really nasty virus like that, it could have actually infected the, um, the diagnostic partition too. So what they should have done was uh, told you to use your uh, recovery disks. And if you didn't have them, they, they would have mailed them to you for a price. But um, a lot of people don't realize that even, even if you use your recovery or diagnostic partition to reinstall Windows, there's still a chance that virus could have gotten on that partition. So I'm from the school of thought, fix it right, fix it first, fix it right. Mark Covington asks, will five and a quarter inch and zip drives work with Windows 10? Well, zip drives will work with Windows 10 natively. I honestly don't know about five and a quarter inch drives. I mean, if you could find like an external one and plugged it in that plugs in via USB, it might work. You would probably have to get drivers for it. It's a good question. I'm not exactly sure. I have not. John Griddle asked, have you ever used the program Tron for fixing computers? No, I haven't. You'll have to tell me more about it. Stephen Barber says, I tell people when they get a new computer, please make restore media. They won't do it. Nine times out of ten, they will not do it. And I did the same thing when I worked at Best Buy when we sold. Interesting fact, when we sold the new computers at Best Buy, we would actually offer a service at Geek Squad for $29.99, $30, where we would actually make the recovery disks for them. And this was back before, you know, flash drives were really popular. And nine, I would say nine times out of 10, now that's not being fair. I'd say maybe seven times out of 10, so 70% of the people would decline the service. And a few months down the road, you know, we would tell them, okay, but you need to make sure you do that first and foremost. Two, three months down the road, they come back in the store and say, hey, my computer's locked up. Or, hey, I've um, I've gotten a virus because of all the you-know-what I looked at. And I'd say, well, do you have your recovery media? And they're like, no. I'm like, oh, that'll be another $30. So then we got to order it from the company. People would do that all the time. You tell, you know what, you got to get on people to do things. If it's really important, even if it's really important, a lot of times they won't do it anyway. Interesting. Mr. Jimmy said, I once got a virus back in 2005 on my laptop that somehow modded the BIOS to disable a CPU fan and ended up cooking the CPU. Very interesting. I never even knew that was possible. Well, I guess, you know, technically the, the BIOS is a software entity, so you probably could get a virus to do that. I'm not a programmer, so I'm definitely not an expert in that field, but that's sad. That's just really sad that people have nothing better to do than make these viruses that'll destroy other people's computers. Really sad. All right, tubers, I am going to end this here because I am getting very tired. I need to get more to drink. I hope you guys enjoyed it. We have 32 watchers. I, I, you know what? Might as well end it on a high point. Give it a couple more minutes because I see we got a few people trying to get their questions in. <laughs> Eric says one of his clients was on enough to, honest enough to say that he was looking at some and clicked on a link and got a virus. That was a very big thing back when I worked at Best Buy. And I had a few customers that came in that were honest with me because once I ran the diagnostic, at that point we were using WebRoot Analyzer to see if they had viruses on the computers. And if they came back positive, quite a few people were honest and said, yeah, I know how it got on there. And that was how. Though later on, there was a whole big scandal that the... Uh, <laughs> 
Before I let you go, I'll leave you with this. Um, Best Buy, I don't know if they still do it now, but when I worked there, we would uh, run, people would bring computers in, and the first thing we'd do is we'd run web root analyzers, see if there were any viruses. Well, we were using flash drives to do that, and they were not read-only flash drives like they were supposed to be. So what wound up happening was we would actually be getting those flash drives infected with compute with computer viruses from clients' computers, and sure enough, what would happen? We would go and use it in another computer, and they they were actually we were actually infecting other people's computers with viruses, and that became a big deal for Best Buy. And I think they finally solved it um, by using read only flash drives. But back, you know, we're talking 2008, 2009, a lot of this was unknown, and that was a big deal. And, and it was really sad for a while. We couldn't figure out why, heck, everybody's computer that was coming in was infected. Well, that was because we were infecting them. <laughs> Can you give me an a, a class one? Give me an amen. Amen. I assume that's what you mean. All right, tubers, that is it. We're 50 minutes in. I hope you guys really enjoyed this. I'm getting tired. I'm going to head to bed early because I really didn't sleep well last, last night. Not sure if there'll be a live stream tomorrow, but you guys will know in the late morning if there will be. Please continue to like and subscribe. Thank you guys so much for the support. And as always, have a blessed day, everybody.